Let's have a conversation about stories. There is power in your story, power that can positively impact another person in ways you may never know. At Inspired Woman, the stories people share help change lives every day. I'm Marcy Naram, and this is Inspired Woman Conversations. Hi there. <laughs> you know, trying things for the first time is a wonderful thing. I'm Marcy Narum, and now we are almost 10 minutes into this broadcast, live streaming, and my guest just helped me out with <laughs> figuring out what was going on. So I want to welcome Tara Brandner right off the bat here, and Tara, I'm going to do this. Oh, I got to add you to this. There you are. Hi, Tara. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. I appreciate you so much. Oh, no problem. <laughs> Been there, done that. Same position as you. <laughs> uh, so welcome to Inspired Woman Conversations. We played the intro, you know, almost 10 minutes ago. And uh, and then I got a message from Livestream saying, we're having trouble. Your Facebook Live was uh, appears to have been canceled. So anyway, here we are. Thank Perfect. goodness. Yeah. Yes. So I'm so thankful that you agreed to do this because I'm going to just uh, see if I can show this. Um, it was about a year ago. There we are. Uh, we were doing a podcast together. You had come to Bismarck to do this with me. And uh, at that time, um, you were, were, it was called um, you had a different name for what you're doing, for what you're doing now, um, raising infertility awareness in North Dakota. Yeah, it was actually like just an email, like beating the infertility, I forget what it is, in stigma in North Dakota. I think it was some really long lengthy thing that we had just, I had just quickly come up with to have some social media presence for our legislative work that we were doing. Yeah. And at that time you shared, you shared your story and um just i guess in a nutshell you and your husband struggled with infertility you didn't talk about it much at all um and there was the expense of ivf and all of that you do have a son now two years yes. old yes he's two <laughs> congratulations that's exciting you. but so many people struggle with infertility what is the percentage how common is it nationwide and especially here in North Dakota. Yeah, so it's one in eight. And actually new research is showing it's actually one in six. And so that equates at the last census time that they did some um, looking into this, uh, it was over 14,000 North Dakota residents alone. So um, it's staggering. It's often dealt with alone and in silence. And like I've shared many times, my secretary and my six person clinic at the time was going through it. And we didn't even know, like we didn't even um, talk about it together because neither of us were talking about it. So there's this overlying stigma that's attached to it. Um, I've been asked lately, as I've been talking about it more like, why, why do you think there's that stigma? And I think it's a, it's the reproductive system, so we just don't talk about it like we do high blood pressure or cancer or things like that. It's invisible. You know, it's invisible loss of miscarriage. It's invisible failed transfers, failed IUIs. It's just something that you can't physically typically see um, people go through. So I just think it's um, not often talked about. Of course, now I feel it is a little bit more talked about than it was even two years ago or four years ago. And so I'm working to help open that up and let people know that they can talk about it and they should talk about it. And even if they aren't in a place to talk about it, we'll talk about it for them and we'll be the voice for them while they're going through it silently. Yeah, you're a nurse practitioner working from Ashley, North Dakota, yes. your, your yes. home, right? My hometown, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and as you mentioned, some people even in your office, you had shared that and uh, had kept it quiet. At the time of the interview, last year, uh, you said something during that interview, uh, during, or you said, you, you want to use your hurt to help other people. And you said, I know what it's going, I don't know what it's going to be, but I can do something with this. Yeah. So a year ago, oh, tears. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know what it's going to be, but you are doing something pretty big right now. 
So you've got this free event that a virtual event yes. that is helping women. Tell me about that. Yeah. So last year, um, shortly after our interview, I don't even know where the idea came from, but we hosted lineup of speakers on a variety of topics and we did that just facebook live um topics were they're mostly from patients we did uh speak that had been through like surrogacy or adoption process we did have some professionals like a reproductive endocrinologist talk an infertility nurse speak and it was really well received people really enjoyed having access to patient stories to professionals who um, work in this uh, different field every day and so that was the first step we did shortly after that. In August, we had an awareness walk at the Capitol, and that was through Resolve, the National Infertility Organization. And right around that time, I was filling out paperwork to start a nonprofit. Uh, I save lives. I don't do nonprofit or business stuff. But people had come forward that had experience in this, and they helped me. Um, many of them are on my board today or volunteers for my nonprofit. And so... Uh, the nonprofit Everlasting Hope came shortly thereafter, too. And I guess I was shocked that there hadn't already been a nonprofit for this in the state. Um, but I guess I, that was just my sign that this was my hope that I was turning, my hurt that I was turning into hope for others. So we were officially formed in August. We are officially a 501c3. And we have, I, I, we're not even one yet. And so what we're doing this week, again, since it is National Infertility Awareness Week, April 19th to the 25th, we are hosting speakers all week again. Yesterday was adoption. And uh, today, tonight is reproductive endocrinologist. And we have our lineup listed. We're, we're, most of them, like last night, was a patient and an adoption agency, an individual speaking from that. So we're trying to highlight and shine light on, on both people if we can, um, but just really getting information that of resources that are here for people right in North Dakota. When I was going through it, I shared how I had social media and that was like my support was my friends in Georgia and Florida, which is great. And I still use it and I love it. I just felt like, man, I really would like to have a cup of coffee with somebody who's currently going through IUI or currently going through IVF, or I just want a support group online or on social media that involves people right here in North Dakota. And I just, I didn't have that. So we do also have that as well as part of Everlasting Hope. We have Facebook groups. We do virtual support groups with licensed counselors. And so I'm just really trying to make Everlasting Hope all the things that I wish I would have had or that I would want for my own patients, no matter what they were going through, to have access to. And so how do people get to be involved in the this event that you're having? So we stream it live um, every night at 7 p.m. Central time on Facebook. If And I realize not everybody has Facebook, so we have YouTube. So every night right after our talks, um, those videos will be upload, uploaded to our YouTube channel right away. Okay. I'm going to share this screen. And I... See, I'm learning as I go. You are doing so good. Things. It's so fancy. I love it. <laughs> but now I see I have to make this a little bit bigger because yeah, I can like peek to the side. See? <laughs> we're both here. Yeah. <laughs> um, so Sunday you talked about an adoption journey. Um, and, and people again can find that on Facebook and YouTube. Yes. Yep. It's already uploaded to YouTube and it's saved on our Facebook page as well. Okay. So do you want to just give a kind of a, just a, brief recap or some highlights sure. of what people will get from, from watching that one? Yeah, so you'll get to, and if you want ahead of time, you can always um, email or message us questions that you have for any of these speakers ahead of time. And we'll ask them, um, and you, you don't even, to, don't leave your name if you don't want to. Once again, we understand this is private. You can just message us in any way you're comfortable or you can ask them live. Um, we will start out by, we'll have everybody on the screen at one time. And um, you will have access to hear, like we'll talk about the number one, like the most popular questions that typically come up with these people. And then um, we'll give you guys a chance to ask any live questions as well. And if you miss it, we always provide uh, that person's information to ask questions afterwards. So last night, even our patient who had recently adopted, she offered to be a mentor or answer questions for anyone as well. So these people are willing to help you out personally afterwards. Um, the adoption agency, All About You, they do, are based in North Dakota as well. 
And um, actually all of the speakers that we're having have some tie to North Dakota. So it's, it's services you can receive right here in North Dakota. Okay. And tell me what's happening tonight and maybe a couple of other. Yeah. So we don't have the name listed because I wasn't sure they're, the reproductive world is kind of busy. It's always busy, but it's super busy right now with COVID stuff. But we are having Dr. Korfman speak tonight in regards to um, what the reproductive endocrinology um, might look like for you. Maybe you haven't started it yet. Um, so any questions that you have in regards to receiving care from a reproductive endocrinologist will be addressed tonight. We're going to kind of just talk high level and let people come forward with questions. Maybe like, what, what can I just come to you? Do I need a certain diagnosis? Like, what does it look like to get into a reproductive endocrinologist? And then what can they expect at their first appointment? Super scary. You're, once you start those treatments, you're already like, you have the, the mental, the physical, the financial strain going on already. And so what can they kind of expect before they go to this appointment? Um, perhaps they're already in treatment and they just have some questions as well. And so we really want to give people access to, um, to speak to him. We also have the Sanford Reproductive Endocrinologist uh, willing to answer any questions we have. Um, they're not able to do the live tonight, but we have access to them to answer any questions or concerns that uh, patients may have going forward. Tuesday, we're going to be speaking to um, two individuals. Um, they are accountants. One is an accountant and one does 911 dispatch. So they don't have like any medical background, but they have made huge waves in their states doing grassroots legislative actions. And so I really, um, I've formed a relationship with them through our journey in North Dakota, going through make, uh, mandating insurance coverage. And so they're going to be live with us on Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, we have, I call them our two favorite licensed counselors. They're volunteers for Everlasting Hope. They run our virtual support groups. And so we'll talk about how infertility is the fourth leading cause of trauma in women. And 61% of women don't share with their friends or family that they're going through this diagnosis and they're quiet about it. And so we're going to just kind of touch on the mental health aspect of infertility. Thursday, um, we're having two... Uh, cancer survivors. They spoke last year, but we're going to have them speak together. They were wonderful. They shine a light on cancer preservation, which um, is a, which is all about infertility as well. Oftentimes, young people who get cancer diagnosis don't have, I mean, you have to like decide quickly what your treatment is, let alone we forget about preserving fertility when going through that as well. And they both have amazing, unique stories that we're going to share. And then Friday, we're speaking um, with Deb. She does, she has a Bismarck, oh my gosh, Bismarck Fertility something. She runs natural family planning. So me personally, like when I heard natural family planning, you just think it's like, if you're Catholic, that's what you do. And she has opened my eyes that this is like for everybody, like put religion aside, Deb can help you learn your cycle and all that goes into your hormones, no matter what stage you're in of treatment. Maybe you're not doing treatment and you want to do something more natural. And then Saturday, we're ending with talking about surrogacy. And so we're going to be speaking with a surrogacy agency right here in North Dakota and a patient who's also went through that. You've put together a great program. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And <laughs> it's a I, lot. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, and experiencing this has to be a lot. And yes. And we don't want people to feel left out. You know, like one thing I wanted to make sure Everlasting Hope was, was no matter if you went through infertility 20 years ago, like we have a place for you to connect or even volunteer. Whether you were going through it, no matter what type of treatment, whether it was adoption, um, just tracking your cycle on your own, or going through with reproductive health, like we wanted to make sure we're a place for you. So we really try to keep our resources broad, just North Dakota based. I would imagine that you have met a lot of women along the way or couples that you've been able to share your story and probably make them comfortable, at least understanding, you know, what they're going through. Is there a story that you can share that uh, just to, for us to kind of come inside that world? Yeah. One that comes to me is Cassie and we featured Cassie's story um, back in uh, December, January, and we kind of put it in a little bit into February as well. And 
her story sticks out to me because she's a nurse as well. And she works for a medical facility here in North Dakota. Um, and they, as a medical facility, don't offer their employees any insurance coverage for reproductive health. There are some plans out there that offer 20,000 lifetime. Hers did not. And they went through a really long road. And she highlights how um, she actually ended up taking two months off of work to because of the mental health aspect that went along with infertility. It just overwhelmed her, consumed her. And she took two months off just to take care of herself. And I think it's important to highlight this because of the mental health piece that comes along with infertility. It's bad enough, I think, that we go through this alone, but to have to take a time out from your job from it happens a lot more than people realize and people think. Having to not be able to attend birthday parties, baby showers, events where there's children, um, just really the triggers that come along with it, um, I think, get forgotten or the comments like, have you tried this? I know so-and-so did this. You know, I mean, they're they're intended to be good comments, but they're often, um, they hurt us more than they help us. And so Cassie's story um, highlighted it nicely. Uh, we receive, like you'll, um, as this week goes on, we're going to be sharing four new stories that have come forward. All of stories that we have shared are found under testimonies on our website as well. And we're always, if you want to share your story, we're going to share your story. So we give at Everlast Hope a platform for people to come forward and share. And you're really active on social media. Yeah, thanks to my amazing volunteers that I have. <laughs> um, I think you need a degree to do social media. And so I have two amazing volunteers that help with this. We're on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And of course, our website is raisingeverlastinghope.org. And so we really try to highlight on all, 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 I should say all accounts, social media accounts that we can, because we understand that everybody has these. Cassie is a good example of that. She does not have Facebook because of infertility. Um, things trigger people on there on social media in general, let alone when you're going through infertility. So we, that's why we brought YouTube into the picture so we can share our videos with everybody. Yeah. It's great during this time, especially. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Oh, yeah. What else is happening? I guess what's next for you? Well, COVID could go away. <laughs> um, so we had plans starting this weekend. We were supposed to have our first ever event for patients, and they were wellness retreats, one in Bismarck, one in Fargo. And so we are currently, we're not sure what we're going to do. We're going to have them, whether it's in person or virtual, we are going to provide that this year. And in, it'll probably be in the fall. And we also had planned to do a statewide conference and that will probably be postponed till next year. So the wellness retreat really was to help give patients tools while they're going through treatment. Uh, we were gonna have uh, people, we are mental health people there. We're gonna have um, yoga, meditation, uh, and Fargo was gonna have journaling affirmation, uh, how to like learn how to do affirmations and journaling and just activities to help keep your mind present, no matter, you know, you could take these tools and use them for anything in everyday life. And then our statewide conference, which we will have at some point is going to feature all those who serve those going through infertility. So whether it's financial, legal, medical, any treatment, any uh, service that you offer that serves infertility patients, that was going to be highlighted or will be highlighted at our statewide conference. And it's those who serve in North Dakota specifically. And so for now, what we're doing is if you are one of those individuals, please come forward to us and we'll highlight you in our resource section on our website and give you a platform there. We had a golf tournament planned. That'll be canceled till next year, I think. Yeah. And a Larks event, which is still in the air. So we were gonna be at the Larks game and have some fundraising events there. We've turned our fundraising efforts into an online uh, campaign. It's called the One in Eight Pledge. So as I stated earlier, infertility affects one in eight. So you can take that pledge simply by donating $18 uh, through our website taking the pledge to help us break that barrier and stigma around infertility and then share with people to do the same. And um, like I said, we always are wanting to share patient stories. So if they want to come forward, we'd be happy to feature them on any way that we can. Wonderful. And there's a grant 
program. Yeah. Tell me about that. Forget about that. Our grant cycle's <laughs> open. I think everything else going on, I forgot. So one of the big fundraising things that we do is raise money to give a grant out to those who are going through infertility that do not have insurance coverage from their commercial plan. It is officially open as of the first week of April. And I know we have some guidelines in there that state like um, when the due date is and when they must use the treatment by, and we will work around that. But we'd like to have everybody have those applications in by the first week of June and uh, the amount given, we have 5000 total to give away. So we've raised up to this point $5,000. And how that will be distributed will be based upon the applicants that we have coming forward. We've worked with the reproductive endocrinologist to form this. Um, it has some pretty uh, well laid out guidelines who can apply to this. But we encourage everybody to look at it, ask us questions. Part of what we do here is want to be able to help lessen that burden, that financial burden that comes along with this as well. And so we encourage anyone to apply, ask questions, and um, we're here to help with that side of it too. Fantastic. And I just want to encourage everybody to visit inspiredwomenonline.com for uh, to learn more about Tara Brandner, because in the interview that we had last year, you really shared a lot about your story. And... And the work that you've done, you know, really leading up to all of this with the legislation, um, going to Washington, you know, talking with policymakers and really leading uh, a movement to make changes for for women and, and couples. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, that was and we were talking it was almost a year ago to the date that we did that. So it just blows my mind what can happen in one year's time, you know, no matter what, what you may be going through. Yeah, wonderful. Well, let's take a look again on uh, how people can follow Everlasting Hope, uh, your, uh, your event. It's free. So people free. Can yes. And that's at 7 o'clock tonight on Facebook. Yes. Okay. And then it'll be replayed on your YouTube channel. Yes. Okay. And then you also are active on Twitter and Instagram. And your website again, you want to mention that? Yeah, raisingeverlastinghope.org. All right. I really appreciate you taking time to, to talk about this, Tara. And I'm just tickled that you have done all of this. And really, it, it is a movement that you're you're leading and something really meaningful to to a lot of people. Yeah, thank you. You were one of the first people to give me a voice a year ago just to break break all of these walls down in general for people. So thank you. Oh, my pleasure. This is what I love to do. And your story is, you know, one of one of many. So I wish you well and I'll be looking forward to uh, seeing what you do next, you know, <laughs> legislation legis legislative session coming up. Um, yeah. I imagine you'll be there. Yes, we'll be there. <laughs> well, I mean, if I have to, remember? <laughs> They're going to get sick of me one way or another. <laughs> Check out the podcast and um, share this with, with anybody that you think would find it, you know, helpful in their journey. And uh, we'll see you next time. Take care. Thank you. Keep up with all the Inspired Woman conversations at inspiredwomanonline.com. Subscribe to the Inspired Woman YouTube channel or follow us on Facebook at Inspired Woman and on Instagram and Instagram TV at Inspired Woman by Marcy. We'll see you next time for another Inspired Woman conversation.